know it's been a tough week, um, but before I get started, um, it wasn't. It was. It was an especially tough week. Um, my niece and nephew, Ben and Elena, uh, lost their mother on the same day that we lost our father, and so uh, we pray for you and keep you in our hearts. Teresa was a friend. And I'd like to start by saying, I don't know if Sheila is here, but Sheila Reed, my mom and dad's caretaker for the last several months, and she's done God's work. And she's been incredible for our family. And uh, we're not an easy bunch to step into. We're pretty crazy, but she sort of fit right in. And uh, while we're thanking people, um, I've always been told how great hospice was, and I assume they were great. But the care they gave my father was beyond great. It was, it was some of the most magnificent um, acts of kindness and service I've ever seen. Sorry, Mom. Um, it was some of the most, um, it, the kindness they showed to my father and the, and the dignity with which they treated him was unbelievable. And I, I think it's important to have that known. I thought a lot about this, this day, um, what I might say, and um, when the day came, I, I couldn't really put pen to paper. I just had concepts. I've lived next to mom and dad for the last six years. Um, because of my situation, my living situation, it allowed me to see them almost every day. I would pull my car into the garage, get out of my car, go to mom and dad's house before I came into mine, see him. My dad, who could hear a mouse, walk through the house when we were kids, so we couldn't get out of the house at all. But in later years, he, he couldn't hear much. And so I could sneak into the house and kind of get right on his shoulder and give him a, hey. And he'd, he'd, light, you know, he'd light up, hey. And uh, just hearing that, that sound made the world okay um, every day. My dad, my dad believed in one thing be above everything, and that was do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He never said that ever. I never heard him say that ever, but he lived it every waking hour. He did unto others that he would have them do unto him. My dad's life was a life of service, quiet service mostly. You know that he was at St. Mary's for 27, 28 years, he lived to go to St. Mary's and take care of people and find a connection. Um, and people would say, well, what does he do there? And I said, I, I don't know, it just brings happiness. That's what he's always done. He finds a connection. And sometimes that connection could be a little bit uh, odd. Um, you know, for instance, maybe mom might remember this, the, Furnace repairman, I believe Jamie might have been there that day, he came in with his tools, and my dad cornered the guy like he was uh, interrogating. And he's like, oh, what's your last name? Where'd you go to school? Who's your dad? What were your grandfather's name? You know, because my dad had to find a connection to start with. That was always the first order of business is what's the connection? And he'd find the connection, and then life would be smooth. I was sitting in his hospital room, Where'd you go to high school? Who's your dad? You know, and these ladies would be laughing. And I said, "No, oh, he's he's got to know everything. <laughs> That's just the way he is. He's got to find that connection." And and there was actually an interesting story. My my father worked for many years when he was working at um, at the um, hospital. There was a doctor who my dad never could make a love connection with this guy, and it really really hurt my father. He would come home and he would be moaning the fact that I just can't get through to this guy. There's no, there's no love connection, you know, as hard as he tried. And so that was really crazy for my dad and, and really hurt him for many years. And I know my mom remembers this. When the, when the um, doctor left St. Mary's, he wrote my dad a card. That was one of the most beautiful cards you could ever imagine. How my dad had changed lives, how my dad had been a mentor to him. As a Christian, this, this gentleman, this doctor, just didn't have the gift of gab. 
But it was, when my dad received this card, it was like everything, you know, it was right with the world because Pops couldn't, he couldn't figure out what was going on. My dad was a teacher, not a talking teacher, a teacher by example. I think in 42, three, four years of work, my dad missed four, five, six days. Um, my dad believed that you'd get up at eight o'clock or you'd go to work at eight o'clock and you'd come home at five o'clock. And that's the beginning of, that, that's the beginning of life. I'm told one day he missed six, so sorry. Um, so, you know, his work ethic is, is what um, was passed on to us. And I think we learned in later life that, yes, he had this incredible work ethic, but my dad was a social animal. And anybody who had been to Patrick County's barbershop understood that there might have been more socializing going on than hair cutting at many times during the day. Um, when my dad went to Florida with my mom, he began working for the Baltimore Orioles to keep busy, he loved it, wipe off people's seats, take them to their seats, make more friends. Um, and after they moved out of Fort Lauderdale, he decided he would go to work at a French bakery, food. And he, uh, he went in at one in the morning as an 80 something year old. We were like, yeah, really? The midnight shift at 80? And I think, mom, you worked there about 18 years somewhere in there, 16 years. And he found another family at, at the bakery. The owner took my dad in. It was one of those things, kind of like St. Mary's, you come, you want to work four hours, work four, you want to work six, work six. What value did he have? It was intangible, but apparently they believed it had value. And I'm sure it did. My dad was an interesting breed, though, as many in this room might know. And he would be happy, I think, I think he'd be really happy if I told you he never ate a McDonald's hamburger in his life, ever. And he was proud of that fact. They sold billions, but not one to me. <laughs> we thought there might be a time when we could force one, you know, when maybe he wasn't going to be with it. No chance. Tacos. Never had a taco in his life. He said, Dad, you love it. It's meat. Vegetables, but what's that like? He said, could I make it myself? Yeah, if you want, never a taco. <laughs> My dad had the same bowl for probably, oh gosh, why, well, since I can remember. Same bowl and same size silverware. He traveled with the bowl sometimes. <laughs> the bowl had been glued back together several times with Gorilla Glue. And I used to tell him that at your wake, I'm gonna crack the bowl over your forehead. <laughs> and so to my surprise, about three months ago, the bowl broke again and my dad discarded it. So he might, he might have believed what I was saying. My dad had an unbelievable um, memory. He, I guess there were times he might not remember what he ate yesterday but he knew every person that lived within a four block radius of his house as a 10 year old and would tell you exactly where they lived and what their street address was, having worked at the local grocery store Liquidates. Um, I, I'm sure that I'm gonna forget something, but I will say this. Um, my dad was the epitome of love. My dad loved, my dad thought if you were worth liking, you were worth loving. And uh, I don't, I, I'll honestly tell you, I don't remember someone my father told me he didn't like. I don't remember. He liked and loved everybody. Yeah, and mostly his children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. Um, and he was the glue in our family. And Tom, Tom reminded me the other day that my dad was the glue, but. My mom was the glue. And my mom is small and frail, as everyone knows. But she's tougher than a stone. Okay? Most people who, who knew my dad know that my mom was a disciplinarian. Okay? Tom said, you know, it took mom too. And I said, you know, it's funny you say that because I guess maybe I'm not talking about glue. Maybe I'm talking about epoxy. And uh, maybe my dad was the resin and my mom was the hardener. Um, but 
those two together could bond anything. And we're all here today. We all love each other. We all love each other's kids. Our kids all love each other. And not to vote for mom, and, but today is dad's day, and mostly that flowed from dad. And uh, I just say, well done, dad. Well done.